the majority of people of faith oppose the overturning of Roe versus Wade and believe that it is not a win for our communities. Across our traditions and across race, we are joining together to care for one another. We know that Roe was never enough to guarantee full reproductive justice. Alone, it could not guarantee the range of support that women and families need, nor could it dismantle the inequalities across race, class, and sexualities that prevent all families from thriving. So in a land that says we believe in religious freedom, this issue of whether or not a person has the right to have an abortion does not belong to the Supreme Court. We're being asked what we are prepared to do to take care of the people in our communities and those who might be coming to our communities and to disrupt the white Christian nationalist political agenda that for far too long has distorted Christianity and turned its sacred texts into tools of oppression. As a woman who wrestled with and exercised my freedom of conscience and moral choice to have an abortion. So the Supreme Court's decision this week to deny those basic rights, not only protected by the Constitution, but also given by God, grieves my heart. If this ruling stands and our U.S. Congress does not enshrine the right to abortion in the law, state legislatures may further penalize women for their own reproductive decisions. As a minister of the gospel, a retired physician assistant, and a black mother, the decision to start or expand your family is one that is very sacred and personal that should be made by an individual and their health care provider. As a Jew, I live by the words of the Torah, which teaches us in Leviticus, do not stand idly by while your neighbor bleeds. That these two documents, Jewish and Christian scripture, are significantly pro-choice documents. And it's chutzpah for people who can't even read Hebrew to tell us what our Torah means. As I have learned from womanist teachings, we worship a God who makes a way when there is no way. We can do this. Together as a nation, we can say no to white supremacist views. We can say no to those who would dare to deny the right of families to make choices about what is best for them. We don't get to impose upon others that which Jesus himself, from the Christian faith, did not choose to impose. We already know that restricting abortion access disproportionately impacts people who are already marginalized in our society, like women, people who are struggling financially, uh, Black, Indigenous, and other people of color communities, young people, people in rural communities, immigrants, disabled people, trans and non-binary people. Furthermore, black women are more than three times more likely to die in childbirth than white women, which is why forced pregnancy can be a death sentence and why our fight against racism and white supremacy has to be at the heart of our fight for abortion rights. Elections matter, voting matters. And so I wanna encourage you wherever you are to, to make sure that folks get out to vote. My prayer is that you don't forget to take care of yourselves as you take care of and minister to others. So may we cultivate spirits of resistance that can be in this lucha, in this fight, in the struggle for the long haul, because we need each other. We need you. Please take good care of your own spirit, of your own heart, of your own soul, and know that no matter what, you are not alone.